Hi everybody, Billy again. So um, in this short lecture, we'll be having a look at ATP balances. Only ATP and ADH balances are very similar. So if you can do the one, you can do the other. So just a quick reminder, remember our little cell, we divided it into three sections, an anabolic section, an anabolic section, a catabolic section, and also a maintenance section. These will feature in the following lecture. So let's get on. I have taken the courtesy of drawing a small metabolic map. Um, you can see over here that we've got our standard biomass formation from something, let's say we start with glucose, so that one overall reaction that generates X for us. And then we have the catabolism down here through these two pathways where two sets of ATP gets generated according to the coefficients given below. So, um, we need to start by looking at the units of uh, the different rates and the different ATP contributions. So let's just have a look at the rate over here, number three. And I'm going to say rate three. What units will it have again? And you will remember it will be the C moles of component. I'm just going to use a K instead of a C, not to confuse with carbon, amount of carbons. Uh, so C moles of component 3 divided by C moles of X an hour. Okay, that's the standard units for all the internal rates and also for all the excretion uptake rates. All of them will be positive. So the next thing is to look at the coefficient that we have defined when we, when we reduced our molecular um, map to a C mole map. So that third... And that third is really what is in the notes referred to as the A coefficient in the energy balance. That third will have energies of mole of ATP. Now, very important, we can't talk about C moles of ATP because you're really only considering um, that phosphate that attaches to the whole mole of ATP. We also have for things like NADH and water where we can't define a C mole. Also, for example, for ammonia where there's no carbon in the molecule, and then we just talk about mole. So it's mole of ATP per mole of component 3. Okay. So when we put the two terms together, like we have over there, we will have a third of R3 having units, and now we can just uh, see that, sorry, that will be a C mole over there, so we'll be cancelling these two terms out and we'll end up with the units of moles of ATP per C mole of X per hour. Okay, so when we have a look at the generic form of the energy balance, we see that this is written in the notes. So we now want to perform this by really writing out all the separate terms and we can do that we can start with the energy consumption term and please note the direction of the arrow is very important the arrow is going in here while in the catabolism over here it's going out so this will be a consumption I'm going to use a negative for consumption and I'm going to say minus minus gamma of R1 okay now this is also just an A times a rate, so the units will be exactly mole of ATP per C mole X per hour. Then we can get to the catabolism, and we can see that we have a half a mole of ATP uh, formed per C mole of R4. So there's a term that we get from over here. We can also do this term, where it is just plus a third of R. Three. Okay, these are all the terms that are associated with ATP, and very important, this will always be equal to theta. Okay, what is theta? That's an important question. Well, let's look at the units of theta first, and we'll see that all these terms, all four of these terms, must have exactly this unit, units as we have spoke about before. So theta is just the fraction of ATP that gets consumed for maintenance. 
So it's not attached to any of the rate streams or fluxes we can call them. It is really just where ATP gets consumed for doing standard functions within the cell. This term, on the other hand, is the term for making, using ATP to make biomass. So it's not a bad idea. Let's uh, um, clearly write it out. So we've got two terms, which will be consumption terms. Okay, this will be consumption to make X. Okay, and this will be consumption for maintenance. Then we have two additional terms, which will be production terms, and this is from the catabolism. And this will be really where the catabolism makes all the ATP that is required. Okay, and we end up with a balance. So effectively, what gets made will be distributed to make biomass and also to give ATP to maintain the cell itself. Please note the units of all these terms are the same and we are effectively distributing the produced ATP to growing biomass and to maintaining biomass. That's it for now.